Okay, so today we're gonna finish off the nervous system lecture, talk a little bit about some of the main, uh, main parts of the central nervous system. Uh, we're gonna see, there's really gonna be a couple of main slides. I'm gonna want you to be able to identify a few different things on. Uh, we're gonna start out with the spinal cord. I mean, overall, when you look at the brain and spinal cord, this is the central nervous system. You can see the brain up near the top of this image here with some of the different parts. Really, in terms of things I'm going to be showing you, the main regions we're going to take a look at are going to be the cerebrum and the cerebellum. Cerebrum is probably just going to be enabled to identify it as cerebrum. Uh, cerebellum, we'll actually be delving into uh, some of the different layers of the cerebellum. And the spinal cord, we're definitely going to know some of the anatomy of that. Uh, the cerebrum, we're going to see, does have some layers to it, but they're, they're not quite that distinct to uh, really be able to pick them out and at least for an intro class it's not something I think is really fair great fair game to go after on that one so again different organs we're gonna look at cerebrum cerebellum brain uh, the spinal cord is gonna be the main stuff we'll look at there take a little bit of a look at some of these things about what is gray matter what is white matter and we'll at least mention the meninges those uh, protective coverings that are connective tissue protective coverings of the central nervous system so when we talk about gray matter versus white matter, we talked about the last time the idea that there's these cells that produce myelin. Anything that's myelinated, so those axons, are going to be what's considered white matter. So white matter is going to be those myelinated axons. Gray matter is really where the cell bodies are going to be at. Uh, outside of that, some of the dendrites and anything that's not myelinated in terms of extensions of that, glial cells, where the synapses are, all that stuff is going to be non-myelinated. Uh, and therefore would be gray matter. Uh, so really when we think about gray matter is generally always where the cell bodies are going to be. Uh, we're going to see the spinal cord versus the brain. They kind of have opposite layouts. In terms of the brain, you have the gray matter kind of around the outside, the white matter making connections in the middle where the spinal cord, the gray matter is in the center, and the white matter is going to be surrounding that. Uh, and to me, both those make some sense in that uh, really when you think about the spinal cord, it's kind of like an elevator bank at a high rise where you have stuff that are traveling up or down, but they don't do a lot of milling around by the elevator, so they just kind of travel up and down, and then it's going to go to in and around in the gray matter and out, where when you talk about the brain, it's doing a lot of processing, a lot of interconnections between different neurons and different parts of the brain. Because of that, it makes a lot of sense to have the shorter connections going through the center of that. So if we're looking at a spinal cord section, you can kind of see right here, uh, kind of looks like an H or maybe a butterfly if you want to think about it that way. So that gray matter is in the center, making that H shape look right there. You have the white matter surrounding the outside. So the white matter surrounding the outside is going to be these uh, ascending and descending tracks of white matter. So basically messages going up to the brain or down from the brain. Uh, there's going to be a few parts of this we're going to need to know. Uh, as you can kind of see, as you can kind of see on the previous slide, it was going out in two horns there. Those are called the, the dorsal horns, where it goes towards the back of the spinal cord. Ventral horns, where it goes towards the front. Uh, we have this connecting gray commissure, this connection across the middle. And then through the middle of that, there is a little opening called the central canal that is carrying cerebrospinal fluid, which is made up in the brain and travels around the brain as well as up and down the spinal cord. Those areas of white matter that are separated by those horns to the ones on the back, the ones on the side, and the ones in the front are called funiculi, which basically means columns. So you have dorsal, lateral, and ventral funiculi. And again, those are those ascending and descending tracks. On the front side, we have that little, and we'll show it on the next slide here, a little where it goes in, where the two halves of it are. That's the ventral median fissure on that side. And then on the back side, you have the dorsal median sulcus. On the back side of this so you can kind of see it right here so you have gray matter through the center here this would be a dorsal horn this would be a ventral horn lateral horn right here this would be that funiculi the dorsal lateral and ventral and then outside that the gray commissure with the central canal in the center this would be the anterior median medial fissure and the sulcus has this pointer going down in the middle of it so you can't see it on this image. Uh, again, in that white matter, it's going to be these myelinated axons, so you can kind of see those in this picture, the little dot in the center there with the non-staining area around it, where the gray matter is going to house, like I said, a lot of those cell bodies and non-neuronal cells, so things like glial cells. 
Uh, one of the things we can also see is there's two roots to this one. You have a root of sensory stuff coming in the backside here. This is called the dorsal root. Uh, all the cell bodies of those neurons that are taking the messages back into the spinal cord, this is all sensory. The dorsal root ganglion is the cell bodies of all those uh, sensory neurons. Where the ventral root is going to be this thing right here exiting out the front side. This is going to be taking outgoing motor messages to the periphery of the body. Again, covered with meninges, these different connective tissue layers. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about them at the end, but you have the pia mater, the arachnoid mater, and the dura mater. So that's really the spinal cord. Outside of the spinal cord, we're going to be looking at, like I said, the cerebrum. The cerebrum, the pyramidal neurons are really in a few stain form, specifically with the silver stain. They can be quite obvious, and I can probably show you one of those. But there is kind of these six, like I said, they're poorly defined layers. They're not really clear, I mean, to the point that even myself, I would have trouble picking out the different layers of this one. If you do a lot of study in this area, you probably could do a little bit better with it. But again, it's one of these that it's not particularly easy to see these different layers, and I don't hold the students to trying to get those different layers. But again, just knowing what we're looking at is the big idea here. So the cerebrum is that main part of the brain. Uh, that if you look at a brain, it's the most obvious part, the largest cortex on that one, that folded with all the sulci and gyri on it, all that little wrinkled stuff on the head. Like I said, there is a layer in there if you stain specifically for it. So this is showing you the silver stain for those uh, pyram pyramidal neurons. You can really see these ones and you can see their axons and their branching dendritic trees. It's really kind of neat looking when you see them this way, but going up and down in the cortex there. And this is what I was kind of pointing out here. So here is this one labeled with these different layers. Uh, just kind of showing you the different layers. But you can kind of see one to two, yes, there's obviously a distinct layer there. Five to six, kind of a distinct layer there. But between two, three, and four on this little figure here, I really, I don't know about everybody else, but I don't see big differences there. So again, to me, I would want you to be able to look at this and know that it's, cerebrum, but outside of that, I'm not expecting you to be able to differentiate the six layers of the cerebrum. And like I said, that cerebrum is highly folded, so this is an area where you're not seeing a fold, but you do have those infolds, which are called sulci, and the raised area, which are called gyri, or a gyrus and a sulcus, if you're just talking singular. So the next thing to take a look at here is the cerebellum. This is one I do expect you to be able to tell these three layers apart. These are quite distinct when you look at it under the microscope or on a, a digital slide here. You're gonna have, if you look at it, it's the part of the brain that's really back here. It's underneath the cerebrum. It's the back part, somewhere right around here. Uh, again, called the cerebellum. It deals a lot with uh, coordination and uh, balance, mainly. It's doing a lot of regulation of kind of equilibrium. If you look at it, we're gonna see that there is these three distinct layers to this tissue when you look at it and under the microscope. So you have what is called the molecular layer, which you can see it labeled right there. That molecular layer is the outermost layer, it has a lot of axons present in it. Then you get this distinct layer where it's gonna kind of change. You get these large cells through the center here. These are Purkinje cells. These are the ones that are quite large, if you were to actually see the whole thing here. These are the cells that can have up to 200,000 synapses. These really big cell bodies, and if you could actually see the dendritic tree, it's gigantic. Uh, but that's that kind of middle layer there, and then beneath that we have what's called the granular layer. So the granular layer has much smaller neurons than these Purkinje neurons. It usually stains a lot darker, so you have this light kind of middle line in the middle there and then a darker layer. So that's that molecular, Purkinje, and then granular layer. As you can see beneath that, you have those white matter tracks that are gonna be taking all these outgoing messages from the cerebellum or incoming messages to the cerebellum in and out through there. And if you zoom in on this a little bit more, you can see that Purkinje cell right here, uh, much, you can see large cell body, you can see that dendritic tree going out and branching out quite a bit, and that's just the beginning of it. So to me, this one you are going to be able to need to be able to do the molecular layer, the Purkinje layer, and the granular layer. 
And really the last thing to talk about, at least on the lecture portion here, and then we'll go and do the slides real quick. Uh, these are not something I'm gonna have you take a look at on the microscope, but you need to know that these protective tissue layers that are surrounding uh, the central nervous system, you have what's called the dura mater. Uh, this one, dense connective tissue, very tough. To me, it's like a ripstop nylon, super, super tough. If you try to tear it, it's really difficult. Uh, we've when we've dissected brains and A&P and stuff like that, it's just one of those that's incredibly tough. Beneath that, you have this spider-like layer that has a lot of blood vessels in it and has little connections going down between the different layers there, which is referred to as the arachnoid mater. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the inner one here, the innermost layer, it's basically some of that areolar connective tissue, this loose connective tissue that's kind of lining every nook and cranny of the brain, and that's called the pia mater. So again, these ones knowing which ones, what they're made of, and again, what those different layers are from the outermost to the innermost. So dura mater, arachnoid, the pia, is the, from the outside to in on those ones. And this kind of shows it right here. You can see underneath the bone, you're gonna have the dura mater. You can see that arachnoid matter. It looks like it has those little legs going down there. In that subarachnoid space in the brain, that's actually where the cerebrospinal fluid would be. And then that loose connective tissue underneath that layer is the pia mater. And again, going down in every little nook and cranny, uh, covering blood vessels, everything else like that. So what we'll do in, at the end of the show here is we'll take a look at, again, some of the sides, look at the spinal cord, look at the cerebrum, uh, look at the cerebellum, so we can see each of those ones there. And that will be it for the nervous system. Last thing to kind of say, is just a little bit about that blood-brain barrier in the central nervous system. We have all those capillaries, again, coated by those astrocytes and with those little paravascular feet that are coating the whole layer there. What this is doing is giving another very selective membrane that makes sure a lot of things that the brain doesn't want to, and then honestly, sometimes stuff that we'd like to get to the brain in terms of treatments and stuff like that can't get through this. But it's this very, very selective layer that really protects the brain. And it's again, those paravascular feet of those astrocytes. So you can kind of see it on this one here, all those foot processes coating the, every capillary in the brain, holding onto it there and making it so anything that's gonna leave that bloodstream has to go through multiple more layers of membrane. And again, ends up being a much more selective process. First thing I wanna kind of show you on this one here is the the spinal cord so you can see a picture of the spinal cord here uh, zoom in on it just a well, let me actually take that back out a second if you're looking at this overall a few things that we can point out real quick this one is in the right orientation so this would be that anterior median fissure right here uh, the posterior sulcus would be that center line right here you can see on the interior here is that gray matter. It's a little bit darker red or kind of pinkish color on this one here. The white matter would be what's surrounding that. Uh, you can see dorsal horns right there, ventral horns there and there, gray commissure, central canal. Uh, and then you'd have those main areas of those funiculi. So the dorsal funic uh, funiculi, the lateral funiculi and then the ventral funiculi would be the center right here. You can see the ventral root leaving right here and then the dorsal root coming in. So the sensory coming into the back right here and this structure right over on the side here would be that dorsal root ganglion. If we zoom in on this a little bit more, you can see it is cell bodies and others off mainly right here. So that gray matter. And if we were to look at this a little bit more here, you can see again, like we saw in some of those other images, you can see that non-staining myelin with the little axons in the center of it. So that is that white matter. Again, the gray matter you can see here, neuronal cell bodies here and here, kind of filling that in. So those are the main structures I believe that you are required to be labeling for the spinal cord. So you can see all that right here. Uh, next one I'm gonna take a look at is the next one we talked about, which was the Cere cerebrum. So you can see here's the cerebrum. Um, I'm going to move it over to a slightly different area where there's not a weird artifact on it. So this is where you can see, this is the one where there would be those distinct, well not distinct, but kind of poorly 
define six layers. And this is what I was kind of saying when I was talking about that, is that it really, when you start looking at slides of this, that one that was in the PowerPoint was better than most. Uh, you can kind of see there may be some distinct layers as you travel down through here. But again, nothing that I can even point out with certainty to make all of you be able to do it. So what I would say is be able to look at this and know that it is the cerebrum. Uh, we can try to zoom in real quick and see if we can see some of those uh, pyramidal neurons here. Which, those are probably some of those larger neurons right here. But again, without the silver stain, they don't jump out at you either. So you can kind of see some of these larger neurons here that are probably those pyramidal neurons. But again, not something I'm expecting to be able to do. So this one really is very simply, what is this tissue? What type of nervous tissue is it? It's not going to be anything more than that. Uh, and really the last one here is going to be, this is the, cere uh, excuse me, the cerebellum. You can see very folded over here in the image. Uh, if we kind of zoom in on some of these areas here, so we're going to zoom in, let's say, on that spot right there. As you look at this, again, you can see you have that molecular layer on the outside. And here's where you can see those different Purkinje layer cells. So you can see these large cells that are in the one here and then that granular layer on the interior. If we get a little bit beneath that, you can see white matter tracks starting to take stuff out of there. But again, those are the three layers you need to be able to differentiate. Again, know that it's cerebellum. Molecular Purkinje layer is that kind of dividing line with the large cells right here, and then that granular layer underneath. So we will see you next time.